Good day, you learners! I'm Teacher Crystal, your health buddy. Welcome to episode 1 for quarter 3 of Health Night. In this episode, we will discuss the survey of the scene and the victim. Just bear in your mind that you have to enjoy the lesson and learn. So now, prepare your pen and notebook for the exciting activities I prepare for you. Are you ready? Our objectives for this video lesson are the following. Demonstrate proper procedure in assessing emergency situations. Perform proper procedure in doing primary and secondary survey of the victims. Before we start our lesson, let's try to assess your prior knowledge about survey of the scene and the victims. You only have 5 seconds to answer each question. Write the letter of the correct answer on your activity note. Number 1. Which of the following is not a sign of fracture? A. Deformities B. Pain C. Swelling D. Vomiting Number 2. What is the first thing to do in assessing an emergency situation? A. Check for circulation B. Check the vital signs C. Do a head-to-toe examination D. Survey if the scene is safe Number 3. When is primary survey of the victim done? A. After the victim has regained consciousness B. During the survey of the scene C. When the victim is conscious D. When the victim is unconscious Number 4 what do you call a measure of various psychological statistics taken in order to assess the most basic body functions? A. Primary survey B. Secondary survey C. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation or CPR D. Vital signs what is the normal pulse rate of children over 7 years old? A. 60 to 70 B. 70 to 80 C. 80 to 90 D. 80 to 120 Time's up! Here's the answer! Did you get all the correct answers? Great job! But if not, it's okay. I'm sure you can get a higher score after our discussion. Are you ready to explore? Now, we are here to explore and discover our video lesson today. Vital signs are measures of various psychological statistics taken in order to assess the most basic body functions. It includes the body temperature, pulse rate or heart rate, blood pressure, respiratory rate. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation or CPR is a life-saving technique useful in many emergency situations including heart attack or near drowning in which someone's breathing or heartbeat has stopped. These are the essential steps used by both medical professionals and first either when dealing with a patient. Circulation Restore blood circulation with chest compressions. Put the person on his or her back on a firm surface. Kneel next to the person's neck and shoulders. Place the heel of one hand over the center of the person's chest and place your other hand on top of the first hand. Keep your elbows straight and position your shoulders directly above your hands. 
use your upper body weight, not just your arms, as you push straight down on the chest. Push hard at a rate of about 100 compression a minute. If you haven't been trained in CPR, continue chest compressions until there are signs of movement or until emergency medical personnel take over. If you have been trained in CPR, go on to checking the airway and rescue breathing. Airway Clear the airway If you're trained in CPR and you've performed 30 chest compressions, open the person's airway using the health yield chin lift maneuver. Put your palm on the person's forehead and gently tilt the head back. Then, with the other hand, gently lift the chin forward to open the airway. Check for normal breathing, taking no more than 5 or 10 seconds. Look for chest motion, listen for normal breath sounds, and feel for the person's breath on your cheek and ear. If the person isn't breathing normally and you are trained in CPR, Begin to mouth-to-mouth -to -mouth breathing. If you believe the person is unconscious from a heart attack and you haven't been trained in emergency procedures, skip mouth-to-mouth -mouth rescue breathing and continue chest compressions. Breathing Breathe for the person. Rescue breathing can be mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing or mouth-to-nose breathing if the mouth is seriously injured or can't be opened. With the airway open or using the healthy chin lift maneuver, pinch the nostrils shut for mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing and cover the person's mouth with yours, making a seal. What is the difference between signs and symptoms? Signs are details discovered by applying your senses such as sight, touch, hearing, and smell during the course of examinations. For example, bleeding, swelling, deformities. Symptoms are sensations that the victim feels or experiences and may be able to describe. Example, nausea, vomiting, heat, impaired sensations. There are two ways to conduct physical examination when giving first aid, the primary survey and the secondary survey. Primary survey is used when the victim is unconscious and to find out and immediately treat life-threatening conditions. Under in primary survey, survey the scene. If anyone is in danger, if yes, can the danger be easily managed? If it cannot, call for emergency help and protect the scene. Check for consciousness. Ask the victim while carefully shaking the victim's shoulder. When there is no response, not even numbles or groans, the victim is unconscious and in need of immediate medical help. Open the airway. The victim's unconsciousness may be due to an obstruction in his or her airway. It may also be caused by a narrowed airway making breathing impossible. Find out if there is a loss of muscular control in the throat area which allows the tongue to slip back and block the throat. Lift the chin and tilt the head of the victim. This way, you will be able to lift the tongue from the back of the throat, leaving the airway clear. Check for breathing. Put your face near the victim's mouth and look, listen, and feel the breathing. Chest movements, sound of breathing, feel of breath on your cheek. Check for circulation. Locate pulse using your middle and index finger. Pulse indicates blood circulation which is essential for the heart and brain to functions. Poor blood circulation may be reflected on the pale color of the skin. This is fatal. To revive circulation, perform CPR immediately. Secondary survey is used when the victim is conscious or has survived. It aims to detect everything about the patient's condition. Under in secondary survey are history taking. Sample pain is a mnemonic in order to perform the steps more easily. S stands for symptoms or the chief complaint of the patient. A stands for allergy. Find out if the victim is allergic to anything. M 
stands for medication. What are the medicines is currently taking? E for previous illness that may be related to the problem. L or last meal only for those subject for operation. E or events prior to what happened. P period of pain. How long what is started? A area where is the pain coming from? I intensity. N nullify. What stop it? Checking for vital signs. Pulse rate. Steps in checking the pulse. Use your fingertips in getting the pulse. Follow the following procedure. Place the fingertip over an artery where it either crosses a bone or lies close to the skin. Feel the pulsations as the pressure wave of blood causes the vessel wall to expand that is the pulse. The pulse rate may be taken in different points in the body like brachial, carotid, wrist, temporal, subclavian, axillary, femoral. No no in getting pulse rate. Never use your thumb, it has its own pulse. Do not palpate both the carotid arteries at the same time. Do not take the pulse when the victim is in sitting position. Pulsations disappear as the victim is elevated to a sitting position. Never put too much pressure or massage the carotid. You may distort the heart's electrical conduction system. The table shown the normal pulse rate. For men, 60 to 70. For women, 70 to 80. For children over 7 years old, 80 to 90. For children over 1 to 7 years old, 80 to 120. For infants, 110 to 130. Temperature. Guidelines in checking temperature. It is being important to monitor temperature in the case of stroke and high fever. Body temperature is measured by using a thermometer with the rectum, oral, and auxiliary. Respiration. Count the number of breaths per minute. A whistle sound or whiz and difficulty in breathing may mean an asthma attack. A gurgling or snoring noise and difficulty in breathing may mean that the tongue, mucus, or something else is stuck in the throat and does not let enough air to get through. Between 12 to 20 breaths per minute are normal for adults and older children. 40 breaths per minute are normal for babies. Skin color. Guidelines in checking skin color. Skin color reflects the circulation of blood and the saturations of oxygen in the blood. The presence of mucus around the mouth, inner eyelids, and nail beds is a sign of poor blood circulation. A healthy skin is warm and pink because blood flows normally in the blood vessels. Head to toe examination. Number one, head and neck. Are there any lacerations or contusions in the area? Is there a response of blood in the victim's hair? If yes, immediately find out where it is coming from. Is there any fluid in the victim's nose and ears? If so, the victim has a skull fracture. Eyes. The table show the pupil appearance and their assessment. Dilated pupil. State of shock. Very small pupils. Poison or use of prohibited drugs. Different size. Head injury that requires immediate attention. Small and bright. Pupils are reactive. No reaction. Death. Chest. Check for cuts, bruises, penetrations, and other impairments. If the victim feels pain while you apply pressure onto his or her chest, there could be a rib fracture. Abdomen. Does the victim's abdomen hurt? Where is the pain coming from? Is his or her abdomen tender? Did you feel any lumps? If yes, get immediate medical assistance. Back. 
Is there movement in the victim's lower extremities? Is there sensation in these parts? If the answer is yes, do not move the victim. Immobilize him or her. Top 10 things to do in case of emergency. 1. Shout for help. 2. Survey the scene and assess the situation. 3. Determine if the accident warrants a visit to the nearest hospital or if simple cleansing the band aid will do. 4. If you are certified in CPR and a victim needs it, begin CPR right away. 5. Stop the bleeding if there is any. 6. Treat any symptoms of shock. 7. Look for medical alert tag in every victim. 8. Seek train medical assistance. 9. Never give any by mouth to an unconscious victim. 10. Wait for medical professionals to arrive. Now that I have already discussed the lesson, I will give you an activity to ensure that you learn and gain knowledge in our lesson today. Directions Match column A with the correct answer on column B. Write only the letter of your answer on the space provided before the number. You will be given 20 seconds to answer this activity. Are you ready? Let's start! For column A, number 1. Lift the chin and tilt the head. Number 2. Apply four senses sight, touch, hearing, and smell. 3. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation. 4. Ask the victim. 5. Check the pulse rate, temperature, respiration, and skin color. 6. Put your face near the victim's mouth and listen and feel for breathing. 7. Pulse indicates blood circulation. 8. Sensations that the victim feels or experiences. 9. Use sample in order to perform the steps. 10. Examine the head and neck, eyes, chest, abdomen, and back. Your time starts now. Time's up. Let's check your work. Did you get all the answers correctly? Great job! In our next activity, we will deepen your understanding. Direction. Read and analyze each situation. Apply the proper procedure in any situation below. Assess the victim if he or she needs primary survey or secondary survey. Write PS if the situation is referring to primary survey and write SS if the situation is referring to secondary survey. You will be given 10 seconds to answer this activity. Are you ready? Number 1. After the strong earthquake, you see many victims wandered from falling objects and conscious. 2. The children are playing basketball under a very hot temperature, then one of them is suddenly fainted. 3. After the fire incident in the village, you see many victims lying down at the street. Some are crying and wounded, and some are shocked. 4. Your grandmother accidentally slips in the floor and cannot move her right leg. 5. A street sweeper is bumped by a car in the sidewalk and have a blood on his head. He is unconscious. Your time starts now. Time's up. Now let's check your work. Good job, learners! Now that you have a clear understanding regarding the survey of the scene and victims, let's proceed to another activity, Directions. Arrange the correct steps in assessing emergency situation 
by numbering it from 1 to 5. Write your answer on your activity sheet. You will be given 10 seconds to answer this activity. Time's up. Let's check your work. Did you get all the correct answer? Great job! Let's move on to your last task. This activity will assess your knowledge about the lesson that I've discussed a while ago. Directions Read the following questions carefully, choose the letter of the correct answer, and write it on your activity sheet. You will be given 5 seconds to answer each question. Number 1. What is the first thing to do in assessing an emergency situation? A. Check the circulation. B. Check the vital signs. C. Do a head-to-toe examination. D. Survey if the scene is safe. Two. When is primary survey of the victim done? A. After the victim has regained consciousness B. During the survey of the scene C. When the victim is conscious D. When the victim is unconscious Three. Which of the following is not a sign of fracture? A. Deformities B. Pain C. Swelling D. Vomiting Four. What do you call a measure of various psychological statistics taken in order to assess the most basic body functions? A. Primary survey B. Secondary survey C. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation D. Vital signs Five. What is the normal pulse rate of children over 7 years old? A. 60 to 70 B. 70 to 80 C. 80 to 90 D. 80 to 120 Time's up! Let's check your work! I am expecting that you got a perfect score this time as you have already gained knowledge from our lesson. Congratulations, learners! You were able to finish the task on this episode. Great job! Once again, I am Teacher Crystal, your health educator. See you on another episode of Health Night.